before we plant any microgreen seeds, let's talk about the three ways that I use to prepare the tray. The first one is uh, to simply wet the soil before putting it in the tray. So I would sprinkle this soil with water and mix and mix and mix until I get a nice spongy mix, something that holds together when I crush it and I would fill that tray and it's basically ready to go. The second way, which is maybe a little bit easier, is to just simply add the water to the tray before you add the dry potting mix or germinating mix, whatever you're going to use. Somewhere in the range of two to three cups. But basically enough to bring the water level up to about a quarter of an inch inside the tray. And then it's a pretty simple process of just adding the potting mix in to the level that you want it at and smoothing it out and letting it sit long enough for that water to absorb and redistribute itself evenly. I did that a while ago to this tray right here and if I just pick some of the soil up you can see that even though the top looks a little dry, it has the right consistency, it packs together, and so that's just after about a half hour of just sitting. So this tray will be ready for seeds in a few minutes. And then the third style of preparing a tray is to use one of these, which is a 20 row tray. The advantage here is that they're half as deep and you'll use half as much of your potting medium, which is a good thing because that's actually pretty expensive. Um, it would be a smart idea to place some supports of some kind. I just found some old wooden uh, support stakes for my tomatoes that I cut down to 18 inches. The reason I use that is because if you just lay this in here, it kind of has a swale to it. It doesn't distribute very evenly. It just needs a little something to hold it up, keep it level, which will really make it easy when you come back to harvest your microgreens. This style of microgreen tray is excellent for a microgreen that's going to have a very small seed. It's going to have a fairly shallow root system and probably is the kind of seed that you're going to only harvest one time. You're not going to come back and get a second and third harvest off of the same tray like you can with some microgreens. It's very easy to clean. You just do this over your compost pile and all the old growing media falls right out. The 20 row tray is very easy to fill. You bring your growing medium in Again, I'm using this tidy tote that I like so much because it just lets me throw things around and not worry about cleanup later. I'll mention that probably every time I'm filling a pot I use this green tote because it's such a handy way to limit your cleanup and to make things easy later on. So this soil does have to be pre-moistened. There's no way to add the water first and let it soak in later. Uh, there's just not enough contact on the bottom for the water to catch into the soil. So we pre-wet this soil before we fill the 20 row tray. What we're going to do is um, split these trays. I'm going to grow half of a microgreen on one side and a different variety on the other. We're going to plant four trays so we get eight different kinds of microgreens uh, to see what we like and uh, see what gives the best harvest, what goes the best with salads and things like that. And we're gonna start with just some regular peas and these have been pre-soaked. They're fairly large and these need to be just scattered kind of evenly and you can plant them fairly dense over the surface of your growing tray and that looks about right. And then I'll just try to get those distributed so there's no real pockets where they're all touching or all piled up in one spot, but we don't have any real big gaps. The second seed that I'm going to plant in this tray is a turnip. 
and these are extremely small these little cups measuring cups with you can buy these with various sizes of holes so that if you have larger seeds you can get a sprinkler with a larger hole but this lets me kind of control my spread and I'd like to get this fairly dense somewhere in the range of about 10 seeds per square inch and get right up to the edges without wasting a lot of seeds. The last thing I'm going to do is the most important, which is to provide the last surface amount of water. It's very important. If I have real small seeds, they can move around a lot with a regular watering can, like our sprinkler here. And so we're just going to use a spray bottle, just a mist. And that brings them in close contact with the growing medium. The peas are tougher. They're not going to really move or go anywhere. So I can use a sprinkler style watering can like this to give the last layer of water to these guys. One trick that I learned is to simply put another tray right over the top of your seeds and give that a gentle push to make sure that your seeds come down in contact with the growing medium all the way across the tray and I'm going to leave this tray in place and I'll know that it's ready to remove because the seedlings will simply lift it right up like this and we'll be able to see that there's activity and it's time to take this off and expose them to light. So that tray is ready to go under the lights and on a heating mat and I'll do that uh, inside. I have the grow lights in my office. These trays take up a lot of counter space and so and they don't really need sunlight. They do just fine under artificial light. So I'm going to move them all inside and I'll show you that setup a little bit later. I've picked radishes which are a larger seed and need a slightly larger sprinkler hole for them to fall through. And I'm going to do this tray half radish and half basil. And I've switched to my basil seeds here and these are extremely small so smaller lid, smaller holes and just start where I left off with the radishes. Try to get a nice consistent sprout don't forget to add a little bit to your edges. These seeds are fairly small, so I'm going to avoid the sprinkler and just use my spray bottle for the last layer of water. And for this 20 row tray, I'm actually going to use another 20, 20 row tray. Set that right on top. Gently press across like this. And I'll set another tray on top of that. That applies gentle pressure to the seeds, keeps them in contact with the growing medium. And when they start to sprout, this whole thing should start to lift up and I'll know it's time to let in the light. This last tray is the style where I put the soil in dry. I added the water first and I've tested it a few times. I'm pretty sure that it's nice and damp right up to just below surface level. And these are sunflower microgreens. They're delicious. I know we love these. We've had these plenty of times before. So I'm going to plant this whole tray in sunflower seeds. And so that looks good. Give them a good solid soaking. Again, working inside this toad is awesome. I'd have tons of cleanup to do if I weren't. So I use it for everything dirt and water related if I want to cut down on my cleanup. And then we add the tray over the top. Again, give it a gentle press and that tray is ready to go under the lights and onto a heating pad. So we'll see how everything turns out here. I'll keep you updated. So here we are nine days later 
and things have done really well. All these trays went directly into our grow light station, which is a fairly large one, about uh, 45, sorry, 48 inches wide by about 5 feet tall, and it holds six trays this size. On about day three, we were able to pull off the trays that were set on top to compress the seeds into the soil and by day six we had really good growth and this is three days later and it looks like we're ready to harvest with the exception of about three species here the basil, the chervil, and the leeks we'll put those back under the lights here for a few more days maybe a week to ten days uh, before we harvest those so we're going to take these down and then Sarah is going to show you some creative ways to incorporate microgreens into your menu. When you're harvesting your microgreens there's really one main goal and that's just to get as much of the greens out of the tray and not pull any dirt with the seeds or with the plants because if that ends up in your bowl you're going to have a lot of cleanup to do. So generally what you're going to do is kind of grab with the scissors and grab with your hand and cut and pull gently until you feel things come away clean. That way you don't pull roots up and add dirt to your bowl that you have to clean out later and rinse and make the whole processing part more difficult. So that's really all you're trying to do is get as much of the green and as little of the dirt as possible. Almost all of the microgreens will push their seed, the shell, up out of the ground. Some of them hang on to them longer than others. The sunnies are uh, notorious for this and so sometimes you have to go along and either brush like this or actually just physically pull the seed pods off before you harvest. It's just another step in the process so watch out for the crunchy little seed shells when you begin to cut your microgreens because they don't taste good they don't add anything to the flavor. You want those to go back in the tray. These are delicious. They're really crunchy, really fresh. They just brighten everything up. Salads, they can be used as garnishes on just about anything because they're not a real strong flavor like some of the others. Like broccoli is fairly strong and spicy. Radishes can be spicy. Ours turned out fairly mellow so you get a radish flavor without any of the burn so that was just lucky. So that's how that goes just like that and you'll fill up a bowl and Sarah's going to show you again what you can do with these. So that's really it with uh, the whole process of microgreens. We're at harvest. We've gone from seed to food in nine days and these nine different varieties will probably have enough to last us one or two weeks and so I could easily start another crop right now and we would never run out. So maybe you want to give that a try. I hope you do. I think it's pretty easy and fun. It's a quick way to get your feet wet and get some success growing things.